welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this session of uh, SolidWorks Electrical. My name is uh, Michel Cloutier and I'll be your host uh, along with uh, JP Emmanuel today. Um, typically we also have um, Joel on the line. Uh, unfortunately Joel had a, uh, uh, a personal emergency today uh, so she will not attend. Uh, but Myself and JP will be uh, will be on the line, and I'm very pleased to actually have JP on the line to do the electrical bit. Now, um, this session is going to be in English, uh, but I understand that maybe a few of you might uh, might be uh, from Quebec speaking French. So I'm bilingual. So if you have any French questions, you can simply type them in uh, into the uh, the question box that you'll see in the um, in the GoTo uh, webinar user interface, <clears throat> I've also added uh, a few uh, downloads in the handout section. So there's another little section underneath there that's called handout. So if you want to grab some more information, data sheets, and stuff like this, uh, you can certainly go ahead from the uh, the handout section. And actually, uh, before I pass it on to JP. Uh, let me start with just a little quick poll here, just to get a little overview of um, of who's who on the session today. So, first question: um, I'd like to understand um, what's the uh, the uh, the the, um, the tools you're using right now. All right, so I'm already seeing a couple answers coming in right now. Um, so I'll leave maybe a few seconds for this to fill in a little bit. So I, I can see the uh, a lot of people using AutoCAD and AutoCAD Electrical. Oh, there's a there's a good mix there. Pen and paper. I think, is my favorite. Oh, pen and paper. Yeah, the classic one. Yeah. All right. So this looks like it's pretty pretty much. Filled in, so let's actually share that uh, with the, with the group here. So as you can see, a lot of people are using yes tools like uh, AutoCAD Electrical, uh, but we have a good mix of uh, Microsoft Visio, pen and paper, and other tools. All right, so that's that's good background information. Uh, let's go ahead and get going with another poll and that's going to be the last one. Um, so this one, um, how are you currently generating product deliverables like bombs from to wireless? Again, I can see that coming in. A lot of Microsoft Excel as I guess expected. All right, we'll give again a couple seconds for that to fill in a little bit. So it looks like we have a pretty good mix of, you know, most mostly half of the people I'm seeing right now. Let's let's just close that and share the from the uh, poll results. Um, so from the poll, uh, we can see that probably half of the people right now are using Microsoft Excel, and the other half is, you know, either within current software or not creating anything at all. So that's good information. Again. Thank you everyone for this uh, this quick quick input. Um, and at that stage, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to simply uh, change it to JP. And uh, let me just uh, make JP the presenter right now. So JP, you're there, and uh, I think you're uh, you're good to to share the uh, the screen now. All right. How's that? How does that look for you there, Michelle? Yeah, that's good. All right. Awesome. Well, first, let me say thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining us here today. Um, and as we've already seen from that quick video and, and from what Michelle has already covered, we're going to be talking um, about SolidWorks Electrical, um, the schematic 2D tool, as well as the integration between uh, the 2D tool and our what most of us already know, SolidWorks 3D. Um, so quick background on myself. Uh, I actually live in Connecticut, and I am a territory technical manager. I'm one of uh, Michelle's counterparts down in the States. 
and I actually cover um, from Canada all the way down to Florida, everything east of the Mississippi, including Texas and Mexico. So my territory is pretty big. I travel quite a bit. Actually, I was just talking to Michelle. I just got off an airplane uh, late last night at about 2 a.m. So um, uh, I'll try to be uh, nice and nice and awake for this. So quick background on myself. Um, I used to be in the Navy. Uh, so north of where, uh, where most of you folks are right now. Um, I, uh, that's us up in the North Pole from the USS Alexandria. And then from there, I became a defense contractor for about, uh, about 10 years, 10 plus years. And I did a lot of, a lot of R and D work, a lot of, a lot of one-off design, but many of the projects actually went on to, uh, full scale production. For example, that one on the left, we ended up building, um, 46 of those for, um, a lot of the submarines in the U.S. fleet. So, um, you can see that they're pretty intricate and, um, our schematics needed to be, um, very detailed as we move through our projects. So, so I always like to throw something in there to kind of wake people up a little bit as we go through this. And uh, I love this this image here. I kind of use this as a, just just a um, icebreaker. Um, this is what I envision when an electrical engineer is talking to a mechanical engineer. Um, and just uh, my favorite thing is actually the flux capacitor we have down here in our circuit. So. So the typical design process that we see um, across the board, and I'm guilty of it too, is you know you have to go in and you drop your symbols in and you draw wires, and in some cases you're either adding text boxes or you're um, or you're actually adding manufacturer part information to your actual schematic. From there, we're doing something such as using Excel to generate a two from wireless or our bill of materials and trying to capture the correct lengths of everything, um, which is not connected to our initial schematic. And then we still have to go back and we have to audit everything. We have to go back in and redline and make sure things are correct and second check everything. And that process typically never ends. We're constantly going back. If there's a revision, we have to go back and visit that again and keep making changes. So what SOLIDWORKS Electrical allows us to do is take a lot of that back end information, such as that reporting and that auditing and bring it up front while we're doing our design. So you'll hear me say it a couple times during this presentation is garbage in, garbage out. So the more information you put up front while you're doing your design, the better you will you'll be, a better position you'll be in at the end of your project, the, better, uh, the end of your design. That way you can just hit generate reports and you can move on with, um, with the next task. So the other major thing that I like to talk about with SOLIDWORKS Electrical um, is we call it the key factor. No pun intended with the, the key to Amphenol connector or Glen Air connector I have at the bottom of the screen down there. Um, but our manufacturer part library or the shared library, we can actually take that particular part that we may be using day in, day out and represent it in a multitude of different ways, including we have a line diagram, a detailed schematic, the solid part, and even a 2D footprint. And when I have these connected to my manufacturer part, if I make a change to that part, it will reflect on all of those across the board. So it's it really start to show that communication, not just between um, the one schematic we're working on, but several schematics as well as the 3D side as well. So it is Friday and uh, you know, I'm trying. I wanted to have some fun today. It is. It's a Friday. We're almost. We're almost at afternoon. It's almost happy hour somewhere. Um, so today, what we're going to be working with is a uh, a demo set that has to do a little bit with this particular image right here. So I actually uh, a side note for myself here is um, I actually am I'm a home brewer. I don't know if anybody on the line is a home brewer as well, but a couple guys I work with, they're also home brewers. And when I first started brewing, this is something that I started with. This little kit here, you make about a gallon of beer or two gallons of beer, for example. Um, and that's just something to get started with. When you go from there, you might move into something like this. And this is actually what I own right now. It's a glass carboy, holds about five gallons of beer and it gives you the whole kit to make everything. But when you get really good, you might actually start diving into something such as this, which is the electric brewing system. And we have, you know, you have, you can actually go and buy all this equipment and this huge power panel that will help you control temperature and, and te uh, temperature sensing in your kettles, in your, in your, um, in your mash kettle and everything while you're doing your brew process to help control the temperatures a lot better. So what I've done is I've taken this brewery here, 
um, theelectricbrewery.com, just to give them a little shout out because I've been working with them a lot with this. And I pretty much took it and I turned it into a giant digital demo set so that we can play with it today. So obviously it's uh, you know a lot of uh, you know a lot of shiny objects and metal going on there, but particularly on the right hand side there, we have a power panel. So what I've done is I took some time and I duplicated it. And we're actually this is what we're going to be working with today is this panel. So what I really want to show you today is the communication and collaboration between the electrical and the mechanical space and how we can start to communicate better. And then I'm going to show some intelligent functionality between within the electrical tool to make our jobs faster. We're going to go ahead and drop in some 3D parts and show that communication again. And then very simply go in and generate our reports where we're able to capture things such as our wire length. So here's just one example of somebody's basement out there that uh, that they do this electric brewing system. Pretty cool. I wish I had the money to be able to build something like this, but um, right now I'm still stuck with that, that glass jar that I've got. So as I mentioned, we're going to first start with this communication and collaboration, and then we're going to go right into our schematic, and we're going to start dropping in some symbols, particularly our, our detailed schematic, as well as a line diagram. And then we're going to talk about our wires, whether they're not just lines or um, in other CAD tools, uh, layers that we have. We're going to actually drop them all in the same layer. All right. So right now I have uh, SOLIDWORKS open, the 3D side. I like to start over here because, quite frankly, a lot of folks who are interested in SOLIDWORKS, electrical, already have SOLIDWORKS. So we'll start over on this side and just take a quick look at what we have. And one of the first things we see is our electrical add-in this tab we have on the right hand side here. Now this is my project. This is my my um, electrical home brewery project that I've built. It's totally customizable. You can set this up however you want with books and folders and folders within folders, however you need to set this up. Uh, again, it it's all depends on, on your preference on, on how you want that set up. Uh, but a few things about this is that just because I'm on the mechanical side doesn't mean that I can't go in and take a look and see the progress being made on the electrical side. I can open and at least view and see what's going on on the other side. Another nice thing with this is that I can actually go in and embed spec sheets right into my project. So now, instead of going to the website and downloading the, the spec sheet, dropping into my computer somewhere, and then three weeks from now, when I actually need it, I can't find it. I got to go back and download it again, embed it the first time. Not only do you have access, but everybody who has access to this project has access to that particular PDF as well. So if, you ever, if you're ever out sick or you go on vacation, that spec sheet's right in there for everybody to continue working. So with that, if you notice, I have a project open in blue, which means that I have it open this project down here. So I have this digital representation of our of our uh, home brewing system with our cabinet and we're going to go ahead and start working on that. But first, before we actually start routing anything in 3D, we got to go finish our schematic up. So let's go over into our go to my desktop here. I'm sorry, just a second there. There we go. So now I'm opening up SOLIDWORKS Electrical. And one of the first things we get when we open up SOLIDWORKS Electrical is known as the Projects Manager. Now this is where all of our collaborative projects are being housed. This is actually where all of our electrical projects are being housed, as well as all the projects that have a 3D um, assembly associated to it. And one thing we notice right away with that communication and collaboration is that I have a project here and it's in red letting me know that somebody else is working on it. Yes, it's me because I have it on my computer and I'm working on it. But if I'm in a server, if I'm working in a, uh, a some sort of work group in a, in a uh, server network installation, um, it will automatically let me know that somebody else is already working on this project. It doesn't stop me from opening it. I can go ahead and I can see that same file structure available um, on this side as well. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into our detailed schematic. And we'll we'll start messing around in here. Well, let's let's do a couple things. So one of the first things I want to do is I'm going to draw some some wires here. 
Um, and we have two different options for drawing wires. I have multi-wire and I have single wire. And for this, obviously, I have four, four lines that I want to draw. And I could potentially do single lines for this. Um, but I'm going to draw all at the same time. I can find the right one that I want. In this case, I only have one set of multi-wires from point A to point B, and I'm done. Each one of these has its own properties, which we'll get into in just a minute. But let's continue on and actually draw out a symbol. Um, or drop in a symbol, and I can actually draw it out. So I see here I have this XLR uh, female connector, and I want to add the male connector at the bulkhead where this is going to connect. So very simply going to go to my insert, and I'm going to search for another symbol. And because of uh, because I need to choose a symbol, I have a lot of different types of classification. Uh, I have I have my symbol selector is broken out into different categories to help me figure out what type of symbol I want to choose off the bat. So in this case, it's already set to connectors. But if I was going to drop in um, a motor or a drive, I can easily go ahead and select those and, and find that symbol a little bit easier. Um, there's also filter, uh, filter features where I can search for a specific name of a symbol if I need to. Um, but for this, I know that this is the part that I want. I'm simply going to go ahead and drop that into place. Next thing I need to do is actually assign manufacturer part information to this. So let's go ahead and find a part. And now I'll use filters, and it's going to look through my entire manufacturer part library. I'm going to look for certain criteria, find the part that I need. And just like that, I've now added manufacturer part information. Let's go ahead and edit that real quick. Perfect. All right. So the next thing we want to do with this is we're going to go ahead and draw a couple wires to this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to use that same wire selector uh, tool that we had before, but this time I'm going to use single wires. And let me go ahead and find some wires that I want to drop in. I'm going to drop in a blue. I'm going to drop in a green and I will also drop in a yellow just like that kind of match the opposite side here so we'll leave that like that for now the next thing we want to do is actually represent this symbol on a different sheet um, in a different format particularly with my line diagram so this here is which is a uh, which is known as a line diagram or aka a block diagram um, is more more of a high level overview of how things are connected and I, I personally like this um, this option here um, I'm used to using in, in other tools where it's just a block and I might have text information in there but with this I can actually graphically represent a particular part for example a power supply and the the terminal blocks that it's connected to I can actually drop that in so that way um, downstream the, the guy on the shop floor or the folks on the shop floor who are building these these uh, units for me or these cabinets or whatever I'm working on they have a better understanding and a better visual aid to help them figure out how things are working not only that I like to I, I've seen a couple of our customers use this particular item to pass up the chain to their um, their boss to let them know how things are supposed to laid out because do, do the higher ups really care what what the internal detail schematic is going to look like? Maybe, but this gives them a general overview of of point A to point B, how things are connected, without going into the nitty gritty of how things are set up. So let's go ahead and drop in a couple symbols. I'm going to use that XLR connector here, and I'm going to actually point directly to that XLR one, such as that very easy to do now what we can do with this is I can go ahead and automatically hyperlink and it'll take me from point A to point B this can be extremely powerful if I'm working on something such as a 50 pin connector or a 30 pin connector let's say and I've got 10 pins on one sheet two pins on another sheet three pins on another sheet I can use that hyperlink that go to feature to actually go back and forth while also maintaining that communication that that's all one part so if I make a change, it's going to reflect on all of those. Pretty nice. So one last thing I want to do in this section is talk about the wires, those lines that we have. So again, they look pretty nice. They're blue lines, but 
there's actually a lot of properties built into these lines. There's a lot of metadata that we're actually capturing. And on our screen here, what we have in this first section under the general tab there is all of the 2D information associated to this line, which is, it's a control line, it's blue, it's a continuous line graphically, we can see that. Um, but the next thing, which we'll get into in a little bit, is that equipotential formula that we have there. And that actually will help us drive our wire numbering scheme later on. The other thing I want to talk about is the cabling section just below that, because that right there will determine how thick our wire will be when we route it in 3D later on. So in reality, in the digital reality, we'll go ahead and route this and it will be a 22 gauge blue wire. And you do have the option to change this to millimeter um, or section if you so choose, depending on uh, what standard you're using for that. And another thing to note is the bend radius on there. Right now I have it set to zero because a 22 gauge wire doesn't really have, a, you're not really limited too much in a, in a bend, but something like a fiber optic cable or a pneumatic hose, yes, those you probably want to make sure you don't uh, crimp the line too much or, or, um, or bend that fiber um, because um, you know, you'll break the line. So you might want to add a, little, a number there uh, to increase the diameter that it bends when it gets into the 3D space. <clears throat> So real quick, what we just covered is that communication and collaboration between the electrical and mechanical space. You can really start to see how things are starting to communicate. We went in and we added that symbol um, on the detailed schematic, very quick and easy to do. Um, and then we also have a line diagram and our line diagram symbol that we, con we connected that line diagram symbol back to our detailed schematic symbol. And then finally, just real quick, we talked about the, the wire styles that we have available to us. And again, those wire styles are totally customizable. Um, every customer that I, I go to has eh, similar, but in the long run, they ultimately have slightly different um, way of setting up their standard, their company standard on how they want to do things. Um, and again, that's, that could be um, an industry standard that you set into that as well. So a few benefits to this is being able to communicate more effectively um, while also simplifying our operations and saving a lot of valuable time. So moving on a little bit, actually this is my, my boss on the electrical team here for, at SolidWorks. Um, this is his, that's his living room um, and this is his kit that he has. He actually owns one of these um, and we actually went to his house and, and, uh, and brewed some beer at his house. Um, we could talk about that later though. So the next thing we want to do is uh, work with some intelligent functionality. One of my favorite features, macros, and we'll get into that in just a second. And then we're going to go ahead and connect our sheets together using origin destination arrows. And then we're going to add manufacturer part information to multiple parts at the same time. Makes it a lot easier if you're just trying to get something drawn out really quick. And then finally in this section, we're going to go ahead and draw a terminal block drawing. Instead of sitting there with two screens out in front of you and just looking back and forth between each screen and drawing another block, um, we're going to show you a nice and easy way to generate that pretty quick. Okay. So we drew our symbol here and we have a couple wires. Um, and we'll... We're going to use it again. Now, I could potentially use the old control C, control V method and, and just copy paste down here or do the longer method of insert symbol and draw more lines and make sure everything's set up. But if we notice in the top right here, I have this little tab that has a star on it. And well, when I, I want to use that because what that's called is macros. And not an Excel spreadsheet macro, but a SOLIDWORKS electrical macro. And what that allows me to do is allows me to take this particular piece of the schematic and I can simply take it and drag it on over and drop it into this area, give it a fancy name if I so choose. And now when I'm ready, I can just take it and drop it right back into place like so. And let's do it again. Nice thing with this is notice that XLR1, it did not overwrite and add another XLR1. It, it gave me a new instance. So now when I look at my project, I have three of these male XLR connectors here. So my bill of materials will reflect that. The nice thing with this too is that I didn't add it in this particular case. Um, a great example is maybe a Molex connector or an Amphenol connector might actually be better. 
um, where I have a housing and I have my pins and I have a back shell and I have an extender and I have heat shrink. All of those parts can be embedded inside of one of these inside the manufacturer part information because I can set a base part, an auxiliary, an accessory. So I can account for every single piece of this part so that you don't run into issues like I've done in the past where I order the housing but then I forgot to order the pins and then there's a six week lead time on the pins. So now we gotta go and do some rework. So just trying to help save you a headache later on. Um, so you can add all that information if you absolutely need to to your schematic symbols as well, which is pretty nice. Um, you're not limited to with a macro as well. If I needed to, let's say this entire front end of the circuit was gonna be the same from project to project. I could take this entire section of the schematic and drag it over and create a macro out of it. I can take this entire sheet and do the same thing and create a macro out of it. I can take multiple sheets and create a macro out of it. It just helps us to avoid rework or going and trying to find that particular circuit that we drew in an older schematic and bringing it up into this newer project that we're working on. And the nice thing with these as well is that they're all saved inside a macros manager a library that we have, which if we're on a network setting, we can share those macros that we've created with everybody else on our team so that they don't have to go and redraw all this stuff at the same time as you know during their projects. So we have these open-ended wires and, and many of you might have, uh, I know Michelle knows them very well, um, Sylvain Trudel, uh, he, him and I used to work very close in the electrical tool here, but one of his jokes was, we have electrons spilling on the page right now, we gotta fix that. Um, so what I wanna do is actually connect those to an opposing page. And in order to do that, I'm going to use what is known as origin destination arrows. I have this tool here that lets me hyperlink between various sheets. And in this case, I have my, my probes, my XLR uh, 135, and I wanna connect it directly to my kettles on this end. So I'll go ahead and do that. And if we notice, as I go to do this, a nice little design rule built in is that we'll not, remember the, the metadata, that information I showed before about the wire, the information embedded in each one of these wires. Well, if I try to select a yellow or a green wire, it will not let me, it will only let me select the blue wire type. So down, downstream, it will help me avoid any type of um, mis, you know, uh, you know, operator error, human error in, in some sort of uh, cross connect that wasn't meant to happen. So let's go ahead and we will continue adding all these up or connecting these up, I should say. It'll take me a couple seconds here. I got three more and once we're done with these we will go back to our sheet and take a look all right so now we see our information and they are they these are symbols that are attached to this line here and there's actually a lot of other attributes a lot of other metadata that we can associate to this um, but the nice thing with this a simple double click and it will take me to the opposing page the other nice thing with this, the, the huge plus with this, is that if I export my project to a PDF, these are also hyperlinked in a PDF. So instead of having that giant 11 by 17 book in front of me, trying to flip from page to page, I can take a PDF or a ruggedized iPad um, or some sort of tablet and I can simply double tap that icon, this, this symbol in my PDF on that iPad while I'm out in the field and I can go from point A to point B in about three seconds rather than 10 minutes trying to trace that line. I thought that was pretty cool when I first started using this. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I have my pumps down over here and I actually still have a part associated to that so I'm gonna get rid of it. And so I have two pumps here, and what I wanna do is actually assign manufacturer parts at the same time. Very easy to do, and the only reason why I wanna show this is because there's been times where I work on a project, and um, let's say a, a four pin micro fit Molex connector. Um, I've used those thousands of times, and in some projects I have upwards of you know, 25 to 50 of those in one project. 
Well, I may start just drawing out the symbols and not worrying about adding manufacturer part information. If that's the case, I can always come back later to my component tree and I can highlight all of them at the same time and add manufacturer part information, everything in one shot. In this case, I only have two, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, oh, well, I have three. I'm going to go ahead and add manufacturer part information to this. I'll find the company. Hopefully I can find it. If not, I might have to go to my who makes it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, it's not going to let me find it right now. I'll come back to that part. Looks like it's trying to search. Well, it's supposed to come in and find my motor, my pump, I should say. Let me see if I can change this real quick on the fly. So it's March. It is March. So let's take that information. Find that. 809. Okay, so I added it to one. I'll work on that in a little bit and try to get the other one set up there. But it is it does work with when you're adding multiple parts at the same time, you'll be able to add all that information in one shot, which which can be very helpful downstream. So the next thing I want to show is terminal blocks. So there's two different ways you can do terminal blocks. And we see at the top here, I have the option of either inserting one terminal or inserting N terminals and you know, a whole bunch of them at one shot. So in this case, I have this fancy little ladder here and I'm gonna add a whole, whole bunch of, uh, of terminals in one time. And in order to do that, all I need to do is simply draw a line and select OK. And I've created a new terminal block, X2. I can give it extra information by going into my terminal strip editor. I can add additional layers, uh, levels I should say. So let's, let's make it a three level. I can add manufacturer part information. I can also add uh, accessories such as end caps to all of my parts. Uh, to my terminal block, I should say, to account for those because those are important when you're when you're using that. But the nice thing with this is I can generate a drawing of this now. And what I mean by that is instead of, like I said earlier, having two sheet two screens open at the same time trying to draw this out, I'm going to go ahead and simply generate drawings. And if you notice on the left hand side, a new sheet just appeared. Let's go ahead and take a look at that sheet. And I now have a terminal block drawing. Now, this is pretty pretty basic. I do have the terminal. I have two from in for uh, two information on each end of these. But if we really wanted to, I can set the configuration up for this and allow this to be extremely detailed. What I mean by that, let me zoom this out so we can actually see that. We can make this terminal block drawing, take all the information we've already designed in our schematic and just generate all this information. So it's a great starting point for the, you know, again, our, our subcontractor or the guys out on the shop floor who are building this for us. Um, we can see here, I have individual wires, but I have wires that turn into a cable that turn back into wires that go to my breaker or on the opposite side, turn back into wires and go to my motor. So again, there's, there is a lot of information here that we're capturing based off of our design that we've already drawn out. So we don't have to do any rework. All right. <clears throat> so real quick, what we did, uh, one of my favorite features is macros, being able to reuse the work, the, 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 the skim, symbols and schematics that we've already created and just, just use them again, just drag them, drop them in. Um, and then we went in and we did the origin destination arrows, which are also convenient enough. They are uh, hyperlinked in a PDF. And then I attempted to add manufacturer part information, but it could not find my part. Um, I'll get back to that. And then finally we went in and we drew a terminal block and we generated a drawing of that terminal block um, with what, four seconds or so? So we can actually generate a whole bunch of different information, be able to communicate that information um, to additional groups in our um, 
in our team. So the benefit to that is eliminating a lot of manual steps, especially the macros tool, uh, which allows us to, of course, simplify our operations and increase our visibility by generating additional options, um, you know, specifically that terminal block drawing. So we're almost there. We're uh, getting ready to start that brew kettle up and, and get ready to start brewing some beer. But first, we have a couple more things we want to do. Um, particularly, we're going to go back and jump into the 3D space and show how the schematic that we just created and finished will now be able to work for us in the 3D space. So we're going to go in and insert a symbol. And then I like to call it that, that ah moment where we can actually start to see um, where and how we're communicating from the electrical side um, back into the mechanical side by making our parts electrically intelligent. And then we're going to go ahead and, and route our wires in uh, 3D. <clears throat> so I am going to close out this assembly and I'm going to open up my just my control panel. Oh, actually I wanted to do the other way. Bear with me for a second. What I wanted to do first is insert a symbol into our master assembly, our top level assembly. So as we insert a symbol, I'll talk over this while it's loading. Um, I've already pre-established um, SmartMates. Um, if you've heard of SmartMates, I, I, I recommend you continue using them. If you haven't, what they are is um, a way to set up mating planes and, and edges. Michelle, you might be able to answer this better than I can, being a mechanical guy. Uh, but the way uh, I like to use SmartMates because it'll help me snap my connectors together without having to sit there and try to use my mate feature, my mate functionality, um, to to pick a plane and match things together uh, back and forth. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. So on the bottom of my cabinet here, I have all my connectors, and except for one, my J2 connector that comes into my box. So I have my component tree here, which also matches my component tree from the electrical side. So J2, what I'm going to simply do, find the part that I want. I'm going to use what is known as insert. Go ahead and select that. And remember that key factor that I talked about earlier in the presentation, the, the manufacturer part information. Well, I have a solid part already associated to this manufacturer part. So it's pulling this part from my library, and it's going to allow me to snap this right into place, just like that. And I've made that connection between J2 and my assembly. The other way to do it, because I have XLR135 here, they're not actually associated to anything yet, but they're already in my assembly. So maybe the mechanical engineer has already dropped and added and made it everything up for the electrical engineers, for guys like myself. So I know which one is 1, 3, and 5. He may not know, but he knows that this solid part, this this um, part needs to go into these, these holes like this. So I can simply come in and I can select associate. I can highlight it and hit enter. And just like that, I've made that association. Let's go ahead and do that with each one of these. And done. So very quickly, I can go in and add this information in and I don't have to be a mechanical engineer to know how to use SolidWorks. It's very simple to use. It's very user friendly. So now that I've added those in, that's a great feature that I love to show. Let's go in and take a look at our, um, our parts now. I broke these out into two um, assemblies. Uh, the main reason why I broke these out into a, a top-level assembly and a sub-assembly is because they are broken out based off of location. And it allows me to set this project up so that I can have multiple users working in the 3D space at the same time. Because if I have, if I have everything on one top assembly and I have it open, nobody else can get into the 3D space. But if I have um, a couple locations set up, depending on how big our project is, 
we can separate this out and make sub assemblies that we can route and, and work with at the same time. It just helps to, to make the project move a little bit faster as we're going through it. So real quick, let's take a look at our safety relay here. Oh, not that part. Let's go to a different one here. So as we see here, I have these, that's probably a good view. We have these arrows. Now they point to the, the ring terminals or the, the spade terminals I have on my transformer here. Now these are the points that actually correspond directly to our 2D part we have our schematic symbol we have on uh, obviously in the 2d tool so when i route we can see here let me zoom into this spot see here i have a, a zero underscore zero that actually points to pin one of my part on the 2d side so when i route wherever pin one goes it's going to go from point a to point b starting at this point and moving out to the other spot so it's just that that I, I call it that ah moment where, okay, I get it now. This is how, this is what, where and, and what we need to actually get the, the wires to start routing from point A to point B. They're kind of like C points. They just have a different naming convention if you've ever used the manual routing tools. So let's go ahead and let's draw, uh, draw some wires out. So instead of just drawing them, I'm going to let the software do it for me. So I have a few options up here. I have route wires. I have route cables, and of course I have route harnesses. And for this, I'm gonna route everything as wires right now. So in order to do that, I have a couple options under that tab. And let's take a closer look. I can actually do a full SolidWorks route if I so choose. I have a 3D sketch route. I can do splines or lines. I like using splines because it looks more realistic. Um, and when we have the option of just choosing a handful of components as we go through this. So to make it a little bit faster, I'm going to do a 3D sketch route. And if this is my first time routing, I would definitely want to start with a 3D sketch because a solid route, it's trying to route a full solid body for every single one of my wires, which will definitely take a few more minutes. It is still a heck of a lot faster than trying to manually route every single one of these wires. So let's go ahead and hit my green checkbox and let the software do everything for me. So right now what it's doing is it is trying to calculate the best path from point A to point B for every single wire in my project by taking a look at all those connection points that I have in my 3D parts while also looking at all those 2D symbols I have in my schematic and routing everything for me. So of course, depending on how many wires we're actually routing, this could take a, a minute or two. Um, ultimately, this should take about 30 seconds with the amount of wires I have in here. So we'll give it another another second here to go. But again, I'm not doing this. I, my hand is not on my mouse right now. I'm just sitting here watching the screen just as you are, um, letting the software do what it needs to do to route these wires. Now at the same time, you know, you might be asking, how does it know to follow those, those zip ties, those sticky backs I have in my project? Well, I do have and we'll see it as these sketch lines appear, I do have what is known as an EW path, which is a um, more of a guideline to really let my, my wires know. It's, a, it's just a path to say, hey, when you leave your terminal block or this power supply or transformer, find this yellow line, this EW path, this guideline, and try to follow it as best you can from point A to point B. So depending on how big your project is, you might want to have uh, a larger or smaller setup on that EW path. So very quickly, that was probably about 35 seconds or so, 40 seconds that we routed, and we were able to route all of these wires um, in this path here. So hopefully you can see it. This is probably a good view up here. I have this yellow line that I've created. It's kind of, a, kind of an overlay. It's actually a 3D sketch that I built on top of my assembly to let the software know um, this is where I want all my wires to route. So we can take a closer look at that and see all the different wires and how they're trying to follow the bundles here. It's pretty cool. It's a lot, a lot easier than, uh, than doing, doing by hand. And the nice thing with this is you're able to communicate this um, you know, out to the shop floor. There are a lot of other features that I didn't cover with this, particularly I get this question all the time, segregation, because when a cabinet like this or a chassis, we want to separate power versus comms. 
we can and we do have the ability to do that as well. <clears throat> So real quick, what we went in and we, we went, a, went ahead and we inserted a part into our assembly. We also associated a part to make it a little easier on the electrical engineers so they don't have to go in and try to learn how to do mates all the time. And then we went in and we took a look at, we looked at the transformer instead of our safety relay, um, all those connection points we have on our uh, parts, making them electrically intelligent parts. And then finally, we went ahead and we routed our wires. So a few benefits of this is, of course, I, I can't stress this enough, increasing our visibility because you as the designer, as the engineer, your design intent can now be passed downstream or upstream or to your customers um, to let them know that, you know, give them the warm fuzzy of, of how things are supposed to look. Um, and again, you know, downstream with, with who's building this box so that they, they know that certain wires go on one side of the box and certain things are supposed to be installed a different way. Um, which allows you to simplify your operations and, of course, um, save a lot of valuable time from doing any type of rework. So the next thing we're going to do is our deliverables and our reports. And in order to generate deliverables, one thing we want to do, and uh, having come from the military world, numbering our wires is painful, and we have to do it for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and number our wires pretty quickly. And then we're going to go and generate some reports. And then we'll just take a look at those reports and see what they look like. All right. So let's open up a new sheet here that I haven't opened yet. Let's take a look at this one. So before I number my wires, I have this little cool this this cool little tool, a little little uh, delighter, I should call it. That's what what the uh, what some folks at SolidWorks like to call them. Um, what I have here, if you notice, I have a blue wire. I'm going to call it my parent wire or my, my master wire. And I have this red line coming off of that um, like a child. And so that's – it's allowed. You can do that if you want. However, I want these to be the same properties as this blue wire. So I, I could potentially hold my control key down and, and select each one of these and, you know, and then I – hit the wrong key and I undo that all and it, it could be painful. So what I have this this nice little feature here that allows me to use uh, which, which is called propagate. And I'm going to go ahead and select propagate and hit my green checkbox and just like that all of the wires that are connected to that have now taken on the properties of that master wire. So it's a nice quick way that if you are trying to get through a schematic and just draw it out as fast as you can and you're not really ready to to determine what um, wire type you need. So you can just change one of those and then push that information across every line that you have connected to that one. Pretty nice little feature. All right. So let's draw out our wire numbers from top to bottom, left to right. Now, in order to do that, the old days, I would have to start on sheet one and probably figure out how I'm going to draw, you know, and start with one and just work my way down. Well, with this, the formula that we have in our wire numbering scheme, I'm already going to it already knows what it is. I'm just going to hit number new wires, hit yes, and let the system do everything for me. And it's going to give me a numbering scheme based off of that formula that I've already chosen. So this is totally customizable. Um, however, you need to have a wire uh, set up. So if it's if you want to do basic information like this, great. If you need to add specific information, include books and folders and and information such as uh, the the um, the sheet uh, where it falls on the sheet for this case maybe four and five for this particular wire you can do that if you need to um, also if you ever needed to and you let's say you have a change in the middle of your project you can always just go ahead and delete those deletes all your wire numbers and you can renumber them again so instead of doing it for a week it just took me about 10 seconds to do that so the next thing we want to do is go in and generate some reports. So re the report manager, we have a nice little view here to see what we have and what we're going to actually capture in our reports as we move through this. And a few of these are hyperlinked. So if we're not really sure what this is, we, we can select it and it will take us to that page. We also have the ability to add additional reports. So right now for this project, I only have four reports coming up. 
but I also have the ability, these are just default reports I have in my um, software, and these are totally customizable. So what I recommend doing is taking a report, if you want to customize it, duplicating that report and messing with that one and adding extra fields. Um, there's a lot of extra metadata that you can capture in a report. For this, I'm going to just do my bomb, my two from wireless, even a cable report, and generate those, see what it looks like. So if we notice on the left-hand side, before I hit this OK, you'll see all the reports being generated for us automatically on the left-hand side there. Let this take a, an extra 10 seconds to do. Remember, all this information that's in these reports is already in our schematic. So garbage in, garbage out. The more information we put in to our design now, the less fumbling around we have to do in something like Excel later on to make sure we ordered all the right parts. And another 10 seconds or so. Done. All right. Let's take a look at some of these reports we have here. So this first one here I have is uh, it's just a general way to set up a bill of materials. I broke this out and I sorted this based off of manufacturer. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do that. You can set this up so that it doesn't sort at all and just puts everything in one big table. You can also add additional information under for your manufacturer parts, um, such as your vendor and their part number, um, your own internal part number. There's a lot of different ways you can capture information for these um, for these reports. Another nice thing, we'll take a look at our our wires here. So for this particular 14 gauge wire, I need um, on this sheet, I need 312 inches of this wire. And if you need to change this to uh, metric, we can go in and change that as well. Um, but the nice thing with this is that, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not out in the shop floor with a piece of rope and writing all these, these uh, numbers down to figure out. I can actually get a very detailed list and exact amount of each wire and how much I need. Um, for each each segment that I have in my entire project, which can be pretty helpful. So real quick, we went through, I numbered the wires in about total of about three seconds, and then we generated our drawings, which in this case, I only did four, but we do have the ability to generate a lot more if we needed to. And then just took a quick look at what kind of reports we're generating, which is, you know, a bomb and, and our, uh, our wire list, including all the origin destination, our to from information, as well as um, some more detailed information, including the length of each one of those wires when they've been routed. And as a side note to that, if you're not doing 3D, you can manually enter a, a length into those um, that um, in case you in case you're not ready to go into the 3D space. So with this, a few benefits of this is simplifying your operations. Again, I can't I I say that a lot because. It's amazing how much time you will, will save with this software um, and eliminating a lot of manual steps. You're not, again, sitting in front of Excel. So looking back what we just covered over the past, uh, however much time it was just now, as we went through, we looked at that communication and collaboration. We took a look at that intelligent functionality. We then went in and we worked with our 3D space and added some parts and then we routed everything. And then we took everything and we took all that information we've already captured and turned it into some reports, including capturing the wire length for every single one of those wires that we routed. So the, the overall, the top level benefits of this are the communication and collaboration, uh, particularly between electrical and mechanical, um, as well as our, um, you know, you saw that little video at the very beginning, the operations, the, you know, the, the folks, the logistics team and the shop floor, um, which allows us to increase our productivity, eliminate hidden costs, and, and ultimately streamline our development. So a few more things I have here. Um, one of them is our electrical content portal. So I think I actually have it open. So I have the electrical content portal open, and it's free to sign up for it. If you have a subscription to SolidWorks Electrical, there is an additional, of course, it logged me out. Let me see if I can get back in here again. I don't know if it's going to let me. Nope. Of course not. Why would it, right? It's Friday, JP. Yeah, I know. 
So uh, <laughs> I'm in here and uh, I can actually see how many different parts we have. Um, and if you use Rockwell or ABB or Schneider, there are full libraries for those parts. If you have a particular item such as a 38999 that you want to look for, um, you can search for that. So this number is quite astronomical here, um, 140, 140 million. Holy cow, last time I looked it was like 16. That's uh, it's a lot. Um, but there, if there's something that you're out there that you want to find, there's a lot of information in here that you can probably find to help you um, get the right parts for your projects, um, uh, symbols and manufacture parts. And the nice thing with this is they're actually in the process of combining this with our 3D Content Central so we can actually capture the um, solid part as well. Um, so it make it a lot easier downstream when we're communicating with our mechanical counterparts as well. Speaking of 3D Content Central, uh, I use this all the time to help me build some, some projects. If you've never gone to it, it's, it's a great resource for finding uh, parts that you might need, motors and, and different type of you know, actuators, whatever it is that you're looking for um, to be able to add to your project. And finally, MySolidWorks.com. Um, it's free to sign up. There's a lot of really cool videos and tutorials and forums on there that you can, can help if there's questions. Um, you can go in there and um, and search through that to help. You know, I use it all the time because again, I'm a double E, and so on the mechanical side of things, I go in there and search on how to how to manipulate certain things and change things to make it look really cool. Um, and there's a lot of cool tips and tricks in that website as well. A few other things to think about. Um, this is new for SolidWorks Electrical. We're still in the process of rolling it out, um, but data management is a huge part of the puzzle with not just electrical, mechanical, but everything we have in our companies and our teams. Um, and SolidWorks Electrical is in the, in the process of getting ready to ramp up um, in a better integration for PDM um, and some of the files that we can actually capture when we're doing that. And a few more things I have here is just a question to ask ourselves while we're going through this is, who else on our team can and should we be sharing our information with? You know, it's not just me and my little box working with the electrical guys or the mechanical guys, but my analysts, if I have analysts on my, on my team, you know, the, the IT guys, uh, you know, the shop floor marketing and logistics, all this information that we're creating and generating, we should be able to pass it. it we've already created it. You know, you know, maybe job security, that's what you want, but we can pass that information out and really make things useful and, and, and make things become a lot more intelligent across the whole spectrum of our company. And a few more things. So this brewing demo set I talked about earlier, my boss is the, the bald guy in the back there. Uh, probably going to mad at me for saying that, but anyway, that's his brewing kit. That's his, that's his living room right there. We actually brewed, uh, brewed a beer in his house while talking about this video, this demo set. And we, we brewed some beer and kind of related it back to electrical with that power panel we have in the back. So if you ever want to, you can search for brewing with electricity on our SolidWorks YouTube channel. And, uh, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to, uh, come and join me today and talk about, uh, some beer. If you want to follow me, I'm, I'm Sweekhead at, at Twitter. So, Thanks again, and um, Michelle, anything from, from you? Uh, yes, yeah, so thank you, JP, for, uh, for your presentation today. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave the, um, the, uh, the contacts info. Um, there, there wasn't a, you know, much questions. Uh, one, one question was asked as regard to uh, the recording, so yes. We are being uh, we are recording the session, and uh, you'll get the link on Monday actually in a follow-up email. Um, so if you missed part of it or all of it, um, you can simply go on the uh, the recording link and, and review that. So it's already noon, uh, so I think I'll I'll just uh, we'll just be signing off. Again, thank you very much for attending, and uh, if you have any questions. Here's our contact info, so feel free to uh, shoot us an email, and we'll follow up with you. So again, thank you very much, and have a great Friday. Thanks, everybody.